Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since we've discussed. Uh, thank you so much for believing in me and keeping with me. Thank you for all those subscribers that have been with me through this journey. And this is the reason it is you guys that has uh, forced me to come back to this and then start making this more frequent videos. So uh, I really, really want to do a lot of live sessions, but according to the US, uh, according to the YouTube algorithm, I need to have at least a thousand subscribers. So I would really appreciate if you guys subscribe to this channel so that we can talk a lot more about this. So today's topic is very important. We are going to discuss IELTS versus TOEFL, which is better according to me and why. So this is all my understanding and uh, I do not have any affiliation with anything. This is based on my experiences. Your experiences could be different. It could be varied, but this is just me trying to help you guys to understand and make a better decision. Um, considering like there are so many things that are changing every now and then so let's without further ado let's directly delve into this topic TOEFL versus IELTS so let's start with TOEFL TOEFL stands for test of English as a foreign language this website is owned by ETS the one a lot of people might be familiar because this is the ETS is the one who organizes the GRE exams also so TOEFL is also done by ETS you can go to the website and this is this video is taken during Corona, so they had a couple of things. If you go there, if you go down, if you go to test takers, here you'll be able to see about the TOEFL exams for the test takers. This tells you in a deep, gives you a deep knowledge about what to do, what to find there. If you go to the test, then you do about the test. It gives you a deep understanding of the reading. So trying to give you a background on what TOEFL step, you know, what the basic understanding of the, of the exam is. As you saw on the website, the TOEFL exam is divided into four sections, that's reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Each of the sections consists of a total of 30 marks. They are marked out of 30. And uh, so ideally you could score the full 100%, which is 120. Ideally any score beyond 100 is considered good, but you should really aim to have a, a score more than 110, which will be really good and really help your chances in getting an admission on the score. Uh, TOEFL is generally, you know, the primary exam for American universities, but it's also taken into other university, universities in Canada, UK, New Zealand, Australia. But primarily, this is the test that is considered for American universities. Now let's look into the other exam, which is IELTS. IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System. This is another exam that's accepted uh, primarily in US, Canada, UK, USA, Australia, New Zealand. But this here, the, the scoring is a little different. It's again divided into the same four sections, which is listening, reading, writing, and speaking. But here you mark on a band of one to nine. So if you see your scores, and this is where, if you go to the website, the primary website, it will tell you what those details are. So this will help you. You can go to the website and check what those are. So basically here you are scored on a scale of one to nine. So the maximum that you, you can score on each of the sections is nine and the minimum is one. And then uh, an average of all the four scores is taken to give your complete score for this exam. So now let's try to look into the differences between IELTS and TOEFL. This is a good website which you know compares both TOEFL and IELTS. Uh, this is a little old, but it really uh, very well essences the differences between them and why you should co consider one over the others. So let's look into the details that they have. They have initially talk, talked about the TOEFL and the IELTS, the format and all that you can go. So it talks about what the different sections are, how many questions do you expect, what is the time that is you know allocated for all of these. Uh, and then it talks about the different sections, like the content that you require, the, the reading, the listening, the expectations that you have for TOEFL. Um, going a little down, it talks about the, you know, the TOEFL scores, who are the colleges or the institutions or where are these scores accepted. And you can see it's primarily accepted at American universities. Now, as we go down, it talks about the IELTS and it talks about various sections that you have and how much time it takes, how many is the number of questions that you have. And then it talks, it talks about the various sections that we discussed briefly. This is a very good website which talks, once you look into that, it tells you the major differences. So if you see, TOEFL takes a lot more time than IELTS test. It talks about the score range, it talks about the section, uh, and it talks about where all it is accepted. 
So a very important thing that you need to decide on this is so where so there are a couple of factors that you know help you decide which one to take. Uh, the first thing obviously is you got to check your school. Does it accept both? In my opinion, IELTS is a little easier than TOEFL. But again, as we look into this website, it will tell you in more details on what the differences are. So let's look into this. The first, obviously, the decision maker would be to check whether your college accepts both of them or not. Uh, so again, so so it talks about you know which example is more to the strength. Look into the details and see how they are. Uh, the one difference between TOEFL and IELTS is in TOEFL you generally have options uh, for the reading and writing, you know, the reading and listening uh, sections. For to for IELTS, most of the time you have to write your own answer. There are no options available. So that's what it talks about. The first difference, which is multiple choice versus short answers. The second difference is obviously there's one which is computer based. I guess nowadays most of the exam that you would prefer would be computer based. It would not be paper based. Uh, the third thing is about the reading sections. Uh, on the reading sections, IELTS has more uh, generic content. By, by that, what I mean is generally they would take newspaper articles and stuff. Uh, on TOEFL, it's mostly you know theoretical or like research oriented. So you'll have to stress and look into the details a little more uh, compared to the IELTS exam for the reading section. The the, the last difference would be no, the fourth difference would be. Uh, you know, you have your speaking uh, section, which is computer based, and you have to speak on a mic, which might cause some problems. Uh, whereas in IELTS, what happens generally, you have to give an oral interview with a human. But again, it has both its pros and cons. Some people like to talk over the mic without any person involved, and some people want to talk to a person. So it, it de depends on your choice. The last thing is, um, again, and again, it talks also about the essay lens, whereas IELTS expects you to write, gives you 60 minutes to write a 400 word essay. Um, TOEFL gives you 15 minutes to write 500 word essays. So again, this, this depends on you. Uh, looking at the prices, prices are almost similar, but again, depends on, I think there's a difference of 10 or $20. I haven't checked it uh, in the recent times, but there's a difference of 10 to $20 between both the tests. Uh, you can choose to take whatever you want, and again, so this is what uh, the difference was. This is a good website. Again, this is an article which was written uh, in 2017, so it might not be very valid, but then it cl uh, clearly, you know, tells you the difference and very nicely jots down all the differences between the different various sections and the various differences. And it could help you decide which one to take, you know, should you be taking TOEFL or should you be taking IELTS? These are the, uh, you know, differences which are mentioned in the article. Now I'll be discussing about my opinion on this, what I have realized from my own experiences. So now you know, uh, we've discussed about the various websites, what TOEFL has, what IELTS has on their, you know, on their official website and what we've, we've looked into one of the website which tells you the difference between both of them. Now coming on to my experiences. So uh, I'm just going to be blunt. Uh, one of the reasons that you would be studying abroad is, you know, so that you can get a citizenship, easy path to their citizenship so that you can work there. Uh, you know, without any foundations and all that. So in that respect, US is a little difficult. Let's just be honest on that. So one of the things that you would know is both these exams have an, a validity of two years. So given this, again, again this is a, a, an asterisk. This is based on my opinion. This is what I feel. Um, I feel, you know, given that your college accepts IELTS, uh, one, I feel it's comparatively a little easier than TOEFL. The other thing is, if your college accepts IELTS, I would prefer that you go to IELTS. The reason being, you, those scores are valid for two years. And I was trying to check in in the US IELTS, web, you know, IELTS exam centers. And there aren't a lot available here in the US compared to what are available in India. So one, if you're finding some difficulty, uh, to get, you know, if you're if you're planning to get a citizenship, and if you see there's a little difficulty in getting a citizenship here in the U.S., you would want to look into, you know, other avenues, and you would want to go to Canada and try the citizenship. In that case, um, I don't know if you are aware of that. Uh, Canada only accepts IELTS for the immigration, so in that case, this would be a big, big, big help. So, 
given the the scenario there where you're trying to look, look into you know different avenues and canada i know although the, the salary and compensation is not as good as the us but they are almost similar to whatever opportunities that you have here in the us and also there's another visa called tn10 visa uh, I, i might be wrong there's something with tn i'm i'm, I'm missing that but that we'll talk about in a different video there is another way that you can you can get that visa and you can come you can still work in the us so you know long short long story short if you uh, give the ielts exam i feel you have an easy way and i have seen if if you, you know, while you are here here in the us and you're applying for canada citizenship it's comparatively easier to you being there in india so in my opinion giving the ielts exam can, with the fact that your college accepts the ielts course i think ielts exam would really help you you know cover two things in one uh, you can also aim for the you know the canadian citizenship and you can look into like you know coming here to the us to study so this is my opinion again like this is based on my experiences because i i saw when i was here i couldn't get i was in atlanta and i couldn't get a lot of uh, ielts exam centers and they were overbooked so it was very difficult but again i also saw when i was trying to like do and see my scoring for the canada based citizenship i saw the scoring was better than what i would get in india so you know when you put out your application for canada citizenship and you have a us address that i guess it does not direct link but indirectly i i think it does boost your score so this is all my opinions uh i could be wrong there could be other things involved but this is based this is all on based on my experiences so i feel based on my experience ielts has a little edge over toefl because i feel it's a little easier and also it gives you an opportunity to also apply for uh, citizenship in canada easily uh, again so this is only valid when we are comparing toefl and ielts uh, there's also other examination which i am not considering for this uh, so this was the end of this video let me know what you think of this and i really really again want to stress the fact that if you guys can please help me reach my subscriber threshold to above a thousand it would really help me create a lot of live videos where we can answer a lot of q and a based on my experiences um, i'm going to i'm going to be uh, i i know i've told this before but this time i'm going to be regular i just need your appreciation and your help and let me know what all topics do you want me to cover on this uh, so thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video